Have you ever wanted to extend your network, perhaps connect a device that's outside, or even just join two buildings together via the networks? Well, the product I have here in front of me today will do that just for you. This is the CPE881 point-to-point -point long range transmitter. The device claims to travel up to 2.5 kilometers outdoor and line of sight. I'd love to put this to the test, but I don't have two buildings that I can connect this to or two and a half kilometers worth of backyard space that I can do this in. So you're gonna to have to settle for me testing this right here in front of you. Price wise, this will set you back about $80, but do keep an eye as there tends to be offers on this device from time to time. And just in case I haven't said it enough already, my Amazon affiliate links are down in the description for this product as well. And as always, it's appreciated if you do use them. Now, as long as you're not sending a lot of data across these devices, the link should be fine as it only transfers at 100 megabits per second. But it does come in a weatherproof boxing. So as it is an outdoor one, you would expect it to do that. So let me quickly show you what comes inside the box. Then I'm gonna take an example of connecting two buildings together. To simulate this, I have my UDM Pro, which is set up in the other office at home, which I'll be plugging in one part, and then the other part I'll be plugging into this UDM Pro that I have here sat next to me. And what I'm gonna do is, via the wireless connection, I'm gonna give this an IP address, and obviously bring this online. So right inside the box, you have two devices, which if I quickly show you them a little bit closer up, you can actually see there's a couple of IP addresses on the back and they are already pre-configured for you. So you can actually get these set up right outside of the box. In terms of uh, the device itself, it is made of plastic, so it's not anything uh, durable. So it, this would be kept high up if it is a two and a half kilometer line of sight. It comes with some cable, cable straps, zip ties, whatever you want to call them. These that come with them. So there are little slots in the back here, which you can attach it to a pole. You get two ethernet cables, which are one and a half meter in length, which I don't really think is too much use because you might need two of them for each. You have the adapters. Now these are US plugs, but I have actually already tested this and I put it um, in a travel adapter and it works perfectly fine. But what these come up with on top is they have the PoE on one side and LAN on the other. So these are 24 volt. So not all switches will pass through 24 volt in terms of power. Um, I know the switch that I have in the office does, but with the UDM Pro, that's not gonna give it 24 volts of power. So I need to be able to plug one of these in. You get some instruction manuals on how to set it up. So the quick start guide and another user instruction guide. So that's right here. In terms of getting this set up, there is a master and a slave. Now I've already actually gone ahead and changed the IP of these because that's not my network. So I've gone ahead and changed the IP of these. Uh, the one that actually says 1.55 is the master and the one that says 1.56 is the slave. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this one into my home network and I'm gonna go ahead and plug this one in the device next to me. So once we've done that, I'll go across to the computer and I will show you what the interface looks like and what some of the settings are on here. So I've quickly gone ahead and got the travel adapter for the UK plug and you have two options on here. There's LAN and PoE. Uh, pretty much self-explanatory, so from the network you would go into here, so we're going to plug the UDM Pro, I think you can just see that just at the edge of my screen, um, the UDM Pro just here into this device, into the LAN, and then the PoE into this device just here. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. Let's quickly go ahead and take that bomb part off, and you can see at the bottom there's a actually a 12 volt adapter if you wish to plug it into the mains and you've got this which gets fed by 24 volts. So just to make life a little bit easier, we'll go from PoE into here. These cables are a little bit long, so uh, do excuse the length of the cables, and we'll plug that one in here. And then from this side, we would go into the LAN, and from the LAN, we go into the UDM Pro, which is just here. So let's go ahead and give both of these devices some power. So there you go, that's that one plugged in. And I'm just gonna give the UDM Pro some power as well. And you can see on the back just here, you've got four lights on there and the LAN light is already popping up. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be sending some data across soon once the UDM Pro has booted up. You can see the Wi-Fi and then the RSS, RSSI 1 and 2. I don't know if you can see that light just flashing in the corner just here. So we can see there is data going across to here already, which is perfect, which is what we want to see. And let's go ahead across to the computer and 
have a look at what this looks like. So these are the two devices that I have set up. So you can see at the top here, there's dot four two. And on the other side, we have dot four three. So quickly log into this one. The standard default password is admin. So there we go, you can see the two devices. So as I mentioned earlier, I have changed the uh, IP address. So dot four two, if I go to here, is the master mode. Uh, it's been up for 25 minutes. It has a wireless SSID, so you can also connect to it wirelessly as well, and it shows you how many associated clients you have to it. Uh, you can keep it the same as your existing home network, or you can give it another one, it's entirely up to you. There's not really too much to this. If I go across to the other one, you'll see that it's in slave mode. Um, and if you click on quick setup, quickly shows you which one you want to be. You do want to be the master mode or slave mode. So if you want to swap them over, you can also do that as well. And then this is where you would set up the manual network connection. So you give it manual or DHCP, whatever you want. And then this is the wireless settings. So this is where you can configure the wireless settings, the basic settings, so you can give it another SSID, change it. It only does do up to AC. It does do 300 megabits per second in that sense. But remember the connection back to the other side is only 100 meg. Uh, password, I would uh, make sure you change that um, because ABCD1234 is not very secure. Um, the MAC address, so you can add a rule so you can whitelist the number of devices that can connect to this. So if you just want the two devices either side, you can do that. But also if you want to allow specific devices to connect to it, for example, if you don't have a, if you don't want to set up a wireless password, but you know the specific MAC addresses, um, you can set that up this way as well. But just keep in mind about MAC address spoofing as well. Then we move into advanced settings where you can configure some of these other bits. Uh, I'm not going to run through all of it because I don't think it's appropriate for this one. I think you're just going to want to plug this in and get it set up. And then we have the management of the device. So you can change the password. So it's admin at the front. You can change that. Uh, time settings, firmware upgrades, uh, the system configuration. So if you want to save the existing config file, uh, you can do that. Channel optimization, ping diagnosis, uh, system logs. So you can keep that on or off. So if we enable that, you have the reboot schedule, uh, search AP. So if you want the uh, light to start flashing continuously. So if you have multiple ones of these devices, Bear in mind there are other ones out there. This is a point to point. There is point to multi point as well. So you can have one, you can basically have a hub and spoke really. Um, and finally log out. So there isn't really too much to these that there is to show you. Um, and it's the same on the other side. The only thing different is the master and slave mode. That is the only thing that's different between these two. The rest of the settings within here, we can scroll down and have a look. They're all the same in terms of network, wireless management, advanced settings. It's it's all the same. Now, I did actually plug this into the UDM Pro that I said that was sat next to me. So you can see just down here, the WAN IP is from my existing network. So 10.1.117. Uh, that will allow me to go back to that network. Um, the gateway IP, which is obviously the gateway IP of the UDM Pro. Um, and then if we do a quick speed test here. So that took a little bit of a while, but there you go. Jump to 70, 75 meg. Uh, that's not too bad. It is, a, like I said, the link back to the device is 100 megabits per second connection. And in terms of upload, 20, 15, 20. So not, not overly great, but like I said, if you just want that connection there or you want to give some sort of connection to one device outside, I think this is ideal for it. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this product. Is it something you would use? It is cheap and cheerful, so it will do the job for you. And if you just want to get that connectivity between two locations, this might be what you're looking for. All the links are down in the description below, so feel free to check them out. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.